Welcome everyone to the Puff Drink Talk podcast. Uh, I am back, your host, Conrad Schubach. Dylan Wilson. <laughs> Hilton Gill. Yeah, and George Abaij is back too. Yes, right. We're a full house. Yeah, uh, full you and I both man. were out. Yeah. We missed you. I, uh, we missed you guys too. Yeah, yeah right back. absolutely. You were having fun. I was I mean, having I was fun. working and having fun at the same time, but I missed being here. Yeah. No, I definitely missed being here. That was... Uh, we want to know what uh, you guys did. So is that the subject today? Talk about what you guys did? Yeah. Yeah. That would be the subject for today. We have, we have some uh, Apple Vision Pro discussion things because that is something that George did also. That Which I included. Yeah, he had an experience. Yeah. Which I included as part of the South by Southwest. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. Definitely. Um, it kind of uh, matched with the experience in, of being part of the... South by Southwest, you know, um, all these innovations going on and all these um, festivals everywhere, right? So, a friend of mine got me a badge. <laughs> yeah, so I thought, oh, I'm just going to enjoy, right? No, you enjoy what you work, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. this is what happened with the poor side of a, a people, you know, like you think you're going to enjoy, but you better work. <laughs> so, yeah. So, well, Go on, tell us, tell yeah, us what happened. Just, uh, well, just uh, got so many. Uh, if you guys don't know, there were 3,500 Brazilians at the sh- at, at, Really? At, yes, the largest international participation in the South by Southwest. Oh, wow. So, which is very then, cool. You would listen to Brazilian accents, like 10 different Brazilian accents. We can distinguish more 10, right? So, probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe even can. more. Yeah, but I'm mean, just saying, like, I don't want to say like 10 and just out of the blue, you know, like, we truly could identify and, and, and there were like Brazilian music everywhere, every single place I could cool. listen. Yeah, so. How like, many people would you say attended South by Southwest when you were there? I don't know, but by the pictures, you can see that every single street you had like New York on a Saturday afternoon, you know, like it was just full, packed in, like full, man. It's just that people, so, because uh, I get the camera open, like just for fun, I mean, just an eye, super tired and was just at the, the Civil War, the Civil War, you know, this movie, it's yeah. been promoted, um, the, it was, uh, the premiere was at the Paramount Pictures. So I tried to get the ticket because I have, I got the platinum, um, badge right but is that then, another hold on no it's not is that a george flex it's actually the opposite because if i don't have the express i would never get into that <laughs> it keeps on flexing it is every good. time yeah it, it is good man <laughs> i just had a don't, platinum not for you <laughs> more don't. poor people working on so hard yeah. yeah. well, i was working <laughs> I had a platinum don't give me the opportunity no but anyway so the camera was on was on we are we are at the top of this place called caroline upstairs i com- i totally recommend anyone to go yeah it's like 500 dollars to get in another flex by george <laughs> no. Come on. No, that's just the downstairs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Upstairs. Yeah. yeah, it's triple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot. We had a Wagyu burger. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, so the camera was on. I was like, man, I thought, like, come on. It's impossible to fit so many people into this theater, right? So, Wagner Moura, the Brazilian actor, was there too. So, I like, I like yeah. Wagner Moura. Yeah. So yeah, he's he, he's uh he played uh, Pablo Escobar in Narco. Exactly. And, yeah. uh, he was a he was that cop in uh, Tropa de Lici. Yeah, Tropa yeah. de Lici. Yes. Uh, there was another one that I saw. I saw. Oh, that's the Brazilian guy. Um, with him? With him? It's yeah. Elysium. With um, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like. The did geeky you, guy, you know, the IT guy. Did you guys ever watch, it was on Netflix, I don't know if it's still on there, but it's called Trash in English, but Li Shu. It's about three three Brazilian kids from the favela in Rio, and they they stumble upon a murder, and they find right. find some money. And and Wagner Mora is in the very beginning as like a good cop, and he gets murdered. Uh-huh. Is it like for a long time ago or no it's a fairly recent it's a probably, cameo probably yeah just a cameo for him but uh, 
really, really good movie. It's like a Goonies version of, uh, like a Brazilian version of the Goonies. Mm -hmm. It was just a cool, like, adventure movie with, like, these three best friends from the favela. And they're, like, living in those giant trash heaps, you wow. know, and, and... I don't know. Trash, huh? That's, trash I'm, I'm in English, but yes. it's called Lixo oh, yeah. in, in Portuguese, the name of the movie's Lixo. Really, highly recommend it. Camille and I watched it, watched it a couple of times with the kids. It's a good... Like adventure. See that? You see movie. you guys that are watching it? Yeah. Trash. Yes. Super. Yes, you can watch trash. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can watch trash and yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Wally <laughs> well, Flexes. Um, yeah. You can get a can of trash. Can of trash. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can. Uh, by the way, uh, on Sunday, Tamiris and I rewatched City of God. Have you guys uh, ever yeah. watched That's it? Good. That's a good one. Cidade de Deus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know. Um, Dylan, it's okay. it's a must. It's a, mm. a gangster it's a movie. movie yes. so you would know if I had. Yeah. It's a gangster's movie, but from It had an Oscar nomination kids. in yes. 2002. Two. Yeah, 2002 and 3. Uh, it was probably like... Years old. Yeah, that's why, probably. It was probably the first Brazilian movie that became before, like yeah. really, really yeah. mainstream in mm -hmm, America. Mm -hmm, that kind mm -hmm. of put Brazilian cinema on the map. The whole world, because... Um, I recognize the name. I don't think I've seen it, though. But I'll, uh, I'll download it. And there's one fun fact about that, a trivia, that you know the, the website IMDb? Mm -hmm. So it's like top 20, I think. Because Brazilians massively voted, decided to vote. They had a City of God day, so everyone should go there because they saw that um, the Lord of the Rings Tolkieners decided to do the same and then put it all oh, yeah, Tolkien's right. movies at the top. So they did the same. So now there are like 100 million people voting or something, or very high. Everyone voting 10, right? So that's a that's a, a curious, but I told. But it is a good movie. Excuse. It is a good movie. Oh man, I I rewatched it like more mature now, old I mean, and wise. it's wise. It's poetry. It's the the whole movie is poetry. Uh, the dialogues, you know, it's the simplicity of the dialogues. It's I've never been into that situation. I was close to that situation, but not like Islam, right? But the the art behind the movie, I, I couldn't recommend it enough. I, you know, like watch it, especially because you haven't watched it. Yeah, I'll download and it. it's just that how you, you tell maybe if you watch it, let us know what you think. Because okay. yeah, for sure, that's a great movie. I think it's on Netflix still. Yeah, I know it's been on Netflix for a long, long yeah. time. It might be on Netflix or Amazon Prime. Yeah, we 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 paid it was like twenty four cents. For the movie. Oh, there you go. Yes. Yeah. Now I'm flexing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, is Apple Vision Pro. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm flexing. <laughs> but so how was your experience at, at South by Southwest? Is this the first time you've been to South by? I've been in 2019. I went there in, in 2019. Uh-huh. Um, it was, I think the event was bigger at the time. Okay. And then just like any other, just like any other super connected events or CD. those are the ones yeah <laughs> those are the ones those are the ones which suffered the most those events are connectivity is more is, is more important than anything else yes so people said that it was hybrid for in 2020 in 2020 2021 2022 and then um finally it yesterday last year also it was um, hybrid. This is the first year that it wasn't hybrid. I mean, I don't. I, I don't know if I can say that because is it possible for events not to be hybrid nowadays? Now it's hybrid because it needs to be hybrid, you know. Right. But it, but during the COVID it was hybrid. Well, maybe now it's hybrid just because the technology is there now. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's developed. that's what I'm, I try to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But and people would, you know, a lot of people would just choose to go. And be there in person but yes i mean if you're like i cannot go cannot spend that kind of money so i'm just gonna go and do the online version of it so. i'm telling you um most most universities in the us today i think they're i i know this is controversial but they are only worth it because of the networking yeah i would agree with that yep 
Um, yep. It's not that... trying to be a doctor or something. Like, yeah. Yeah. The things I, that I, you really need to be um, so immersed. I got yeah. my, my bachelor's degree from an online school. And, I mean, right after I finished, it was like, okay, so what do I do now? And now, now, there's no networking. There's no, I mean, they did offer, but it was like a small online school. And now it's like, you know. It, well, but at the least, you now you know how to do a heart surgery, right? From your online Oh, 100%. Course. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> but I just mean like having that interpersonal connection, like, mm-hmm. you know, like you're saying. Yeah. Um, that's where an education and stuff, uh, traditional education is so super beneficial. Um. Just a time out to speak with our puffers, drinkers, and talkers. I I got this cigar on Aladino, recommended by our friend Ian Harvey from Smoky Smokers Abbey. So I'm pretty curious to understand why he, you know, he mentioned that one specifically out of three thousand cigars he got. He's got <laughs> in his. And he said something, one of the nicest things, Conrad. Yeah. He said to me, we, we, we engage in a conversation because you guys know I don't like to talk much, right? So, sure. you know, and then he. So I've heard. Yeah, exactly. So he said, <laughs> you know, George, this is the best. Since they possible. start, whoever. I've heard you, know, you say who, that. Who's been talking? Yeah. You know, since we started. I just the miss speaking here. <laughs> and he told me the following, man. He told me the following, like, George, this is a great business. They're like, why do you mean? Come, come with me to the. Come with me to the humidor. He opened the door. I see 3,000 cigars here. What do you think is going to happen if I bankrupt? I'm, I'm going to smoke the whole 3,000 because I can <laughs> smoke all the... I know all the 3,000 cigars here. My His wife smokes too. Yeah. And this is a great business because if I go down... I, the cigars go with me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You're taking your inventory with you. You take an inventory with you, you know? So that is everything in a bag yeah so you know what i'm saying like so I, I liked it his his view on that so ian if you if for any reason you watch it kudos to you thank you that's cool right. yeah that's Just, definitely one of those things where you're doing what you love and love what you're doing probably with his wife which is really cool both of them yeah yeah so i really so, he's so knowledgeable that guy yeah oh you've been there oh, yeah. like, more than once oh yes uh, this one is the one that I think Dylan smoked the first time. Yeah, that Dylan. Dylan met you. Yeah, it was the yeah. first time we met. Yeah, it was a hit, right? Wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we talked about basketball. And oh man, politics. I think. Time flew. Yeah. It was cool. The corner you got the nice corner in there. The 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 place is great. I mean, I, I'm going to promote it there. for free because I. It's the best place I know in town. You guys we said that. You cannot promote on the podcast, though. Oh, you can't? No. We're going to get a strike. Oh. It's tobacco industry. Oh, okay. You can blip it later. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about you, man. Tell me about your trip. Ian from. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, how was it? San Diego. Fantastic. So we flew in. Uh, <clears throat> I have to say. LA, so we flew into LA. In the airport, waiting to get seated, off comes Nick Kroll from the league. Uh, actor, and I met Nick Kroll actually before. Yeah? Yeah. So I lived in a small town in Northern California, and he was there promoting a movie. And uh, can you pull up Nick Kroll? So, mm-hmm. so uh, he, that's him. Yeah. So I saw him get out of a plane, take a couple pictures, and I'm like, oh, that's Nick Kroll. Like, that's cool. He was probably there for South by Southwest. Um, I'd met him before. I, me and my best friend, we were drunk in down, like a small downtown, and uh, they were like, oh, Nick Kroll's in town. Let's go, let's go meet him. So we walk into, stumble into a bar, and my friend's just like, Nick, I love you, man. <laughs> You're such a great actor. Can I buy you a beer? And Nick's like, yeah, sure. It's like, uh, you know, here you go. And that was like the only interaction we had. And Nick's <laughs> like, cool. Oh, cool, man. Thanks for the beer. And like walked off and he was just like so happy with it. But so I saw him. Uh, we flew into L.A., went to the Hollywood sign, took some pictures there. Um, next day we went to Universal Studios, found out that I'm getting old. 
<laughs> and that I can't do <laughs> the things that I used to. Like what? So... Like woke. <laughs> you know what the best God part is? Like God waiting damn. line. No. So you know what happened? <laughs> if I can't. God damn it! How did you know, you son of a bitch? <laughs> so I've always had a bad left knee. I heard it. I heard it in the military. Like, yeah. No, I'm being. I'm being 100 percent serious with you guys. So we're in Universal. We went on a Saturday. Hey, Universal. Respect Studios. our veteran here. Right? Yeah. You're the one laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a personal, personal friend of mine. <laughs> so, we have that kind. We had that kind of uh, um, freedom to. Yeah. Uh, no. No. I'm not. I, I get it. I get it. I'd make fun of me too. But anyways. <laughs> so Universal Studios on a Saturday, it's jam packed. Like every ride is easily 45 minutes to an hour wait. Like it's just tons and tons of people. Um, we went on the first ride. We went on was. Uh, uh, went to Hagrid's, the Harry Potter. There's like oh, Hagrid's yeah. ride, yeah, that's cool. and Hagrid's my cool. daughter Lauren was just enough height where she can she can go on the ride with somebody, and my wife is just freaking out. Camila's like, she's gonna fly out the seat, da -da -da -da, all this other <laughs> stuff. Waited in line, and Lauren is like, I'm so ready to go on this on on this roller coaster. She gets on, my wife's holding on to her because she's afraid that she's gonna fly out. Lauren's like this the whole ride, hands up, screaming, just having the best time of her life. As soon as it stops, she's like, can we get back in line and go again? And I'm like, okay, she's going to be, she's just doing just fine. Yeah. But anyway, so we, so we did a couple rides. And then what I like about Universal Studios is that they have the, the tour, the studio tour. So it'll, for anybody that hasn't been, you hop on these big buses that are open window and, and open doors and they take you through like the old movie sets of movies and music videos and TV shows that they've built, you know, way back from the 1920s and they still use to this day like Little New York and, you know, Little Neighborhood and, and all types of different things. So um, my wife and my son get in line and I... I had a stroller just because you can carry stuff in. And then if my daughter gets tired, you can throw her in there. Yeah. And they had stroller parking. So I'm like, you guys go get in line since we already have to wait 45 minutes. I'm going to go park the stroller. And then I'll just cut line and meet with you guys. So park the stroller, start running up to get in the line. And they have these little like chain link fence uh, or like the just the forms the line. Yeah. Yeah. The, the little the little fence guiding you to go through and so you're I, trying to go over or under so here's the thing it was at that perfect height where i could have gone over but i chose the ladder of going under and just the motion of like bending down and like twisting i stood uh, up and my knee just like shifted, oh, shifted and 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 it didn't uh, go back into place correctly yeah. and i mean it, and it's happened before yeah. Where I was like, oh, okay, let me like push it back into place type of thing. But it wouldn't go back. And it didn't go back that whole day. And I mean, I was in I was in pain where I almost threw up like a couple of times where I'm just like and the whole time at Universal Studios, I'm like flexing my leg. I'm like trying to get it to pop, you know, back into place. Like nothing is working. But I was like, fuck it, man. I'm not going to let this ruin our vacation. Like, I'm just going to have to power through. So I did. I hobbled through and just kind of found positions with my leg to, you know, to sit in where it wasn't, you know, it wasn't too bad. But it was, it was painful. Um, um, just to empathize with you, right? Um, not to take anything from you and just to empathize. I, I had that for 15 years with my hip. With your hips? And, uh, oh, yeah. I kind of, uh, each of us have a different experience, right? It has a different experience, but um, I I feel for you, man. It's yeah. not a place where you want to have fun. And then it doesn't, I think other people, without that, it's difficult for people to realize how much it affects you, right? Oh, yeah. No, I was in so much, and it's so funny you say that because I was in so much pain. And I'm like kicking my leg, like like trying to flex it out and, and just move it in certain ways for it to like pop back and release sure. that tension. 
nothing was happening. And like, I just started talking to this one lady with her, with her kids. And she's like, I got some pills. Like I got some, luckily it was legal pills. She's like, I got some ibuprofen. Do you want to take yeah. it? And at oh, this point, okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't care. Just give it to me. Yeah. I mean, it could have been laced with anything how I dozens mean, yeah, how many dozens you have <laughs> yeah, yeah it's not like how many you have yeah, yeah. It's just like hold on let me cut it up for just you dropping it up and yeah. starting it <laughs> no but but i was like i didn't care at but that point have I you was, tried to go under the chain on the reverse direction the reverse direction no I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i didn't think of that like, in hindsight, way. Yeah. yeah maybe i should have or maybe twist the all the knee <laughs> yeah see that's my problem But my right leg was on fire just because I'm putting all my weight on one side, yeah. limping through. And it's like, and of course, all my kids are like, come on, dad, let's go run, do this. Like, let's go here. Let's go see. This. Hello, old man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So. I'm trying. So. Corn is so yeah. young. You're Still. dragging us. <laughs> yeah. Well, knee problems, you know, I, it's just a bad knee. I've had, I've had knee problems on this one knee for a while, but. Just decided to act up on Universal Studios day one. But I got it to finally go back into place that next day. Uh, of all things, we were sitting in the hotel room, and I went to go get my socks, and I was like, let me put it this way. And I just went like this, and it went... Wow. Just kind of pop into place, and I go... Real satisfying. Now, you're, I go, now you now, do it. Now yeah. we're ready for Disney. Yeah. <laughs> so, Saturday was Universal, and Sunday was Disney. So... Cool. Um, So yeah, so then Sunday we went to Disney, and out of the two, I have to say, Disney is probably my favorite. Yeah, I would have just asked you about that. Yeah, so why? Why do you think it's, it's so? Better? Universal Studio Studios is a lot of fun. It's just one thing that Universal Studios has that makes it a fun, unique experience is what they call the City Walk. So outside, when you park your vehicle. And get out and get into like the main entrance of Universal Studios or, or walk into to get to the main park is probably like a hundred different restaurants and shops. And it's basically a downtown with like neon lights. Like there's a neon King Kong hanging from one, you know, from a roof. And they have an IMAX theater there. And they have uh, Voodoo Donuts, which they have here in downtown Austin, but cool. you know, it originally started up in Portland. It's got like a cult following for a donut place and all types. They have a, I forget the name of the, it's like a chocolate factory, but it's a steampunk restaurant oh, cool. with, and, and the outside's all gears and uh -huh. just, it, we didn't go into it, but Mather it was super gears, cool. Yes. Yeah. All of the Universal's uh, studio stores. So now they actually opened up Super Mario World At, and they don't have it in Florida yet, but it, they yeah. have it here in in Hollywood, and that was cool. So everything is Mario Brothers, Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, <laughs> Bowser, like Princess cool. Peach. You had all of that stuff. So it was the City Walk is huge, ginormous. So you get to experience a ton of different things, and there's lights and music, and you want to go to a Dodger shop, you want to go to you know pick up a princess peach shirt for the kids like it's got all of that there the juice of america man exactly the juice of america pop right? culture <laughs> yeah i mean everything is just pumping. packed in one place and they don't close until like past midnight so exactly. there's a ton of people out um so it was really it was really fun so that's what the, time does the park close the park closes at so the first night when we got there um and i recommend this if you guys ever go We stayed at the Safari Inn, which is a hotel in Burbank, and it's actually been on TV shows and music videos and movies. Safari. Um, but they offer, offer a shuttle service. So every one hour, they have a bus that'll take you there. You just tell them like when you want to be dropped off and when you want to get picked up, driver will be there. You don't have to pay $40 or $50 in parking. You don't have to deal with the traffic of getting in, paying, getting out, waiting. Hey. Uh, meet me here at seven o'clock in the morning and pick me up at eleven o'clock at night. So when we when we checked in that first night, like after a three hour flight marathon, dude, sixteen hour days. So. I, I'm, well, and I'm telling you that we woke up early to to get to the airport, got to the airport, three hour flight, um, 
got to the rental car. Of course, we flew Spirit. What time they're, did you guys get there? They're a bunch of shitheads. So, um, <laughs> what, time did, what time did you guys get there? Got there? Get there? Uh, I think we got there at like two. Okay, so two you, in the you, afternoon. You, you enjoyed the day. You were able to. So, but here's the thing, and I and again, Spirit being a Spirit being a bunch of shitheads. They, <laughs> I, I had the stroller. And you know, so when you get into the airport, you leave it there at like the, at like the front of the airplane, and they put it in last. And then when you get out, they have an employee to like bring it out, so you can, you know, put your kids in and get them out. Uh, they put it in the oversized luggage compartment. So while everyone got their luggage from the carousel, we had to wait an extra hour to get our stroller. And I'm like, what the f- one hour what is- stolen in the trip? Yeah. Jesus, this is... And I said that, I was like, guys, I literally left it here with you because, you know, because it was supposed to be fast. And they're like, oh, sorry, there's nothing we can do. I mean, it's here. You just got to wait. So we wait. We sat around for an hour waiting for that that stroller to come around. So, but but we rented the car, got some food because we're starving. You know, we've been out. It's a three-hour flight. And again, spirit. Then you're getting spirit food? no. (laughs) You want a bottle of water? Five bucks. You want a bag of peanuts? That's three fifty. Every single, <laughs> every single, they charge for everything. You want Wi-Fi? That's fifteen bucks. Remember that? You know that AT and T commercial where it's like, oh, you, you like you have to pay for everything. Yeah. yeah. That's what That's Spirit what is. You sit there in the in the little tray, the tray that folds down is about this big. It's a metal tray. You yeah. feel like you're in prison. Don't pay the extra money and go to a different airline. Spirit is trash. I really just did not have a good experience with them. Look, guys, I only fly Delta. I know. So because, I yes, because <laughs> I'll tell you something. Yes, so this company was. Oh my God. <laughs> no, no, it's the opposite. Me and I only fly Delta because of this. Presidential suite. <laughs> because of this, first you know. Class. First of all, this guy's. I had zero credit. Let I me credit. see if I'm flexing here. Yeah. yeah. My credit. I didn't have a credit when I got to this country, right? So no one would give me credits. <laughs> Delta went there and gave us ten thousand dollars in credit. Read yeah. Delta in the smoke. <laughs> you see that? That is, and that's good customer service. Ten thousand dollars in credits, nothing. I, I, we didn't have anything. Yeah, that is just a shitty, you know, bank that we got it. We didn't even count for um, our credit, cre- our credit score. And these guys always give us. I we never ask. They always send us upgrades. Oh, just um, you can take one extra lug, one extra bag. Uh, oh, we up, we upgraded your seats to a plus. Man, plus is way huge. more than we need. It's huge. Yeah. We don't need that. Yeah. You know the plus, right? So, and it's cheap. I do. <laughs> no, man. Well, it, it, unless you want to, you know, we want to have the, then you have to go to a business class. But man, it's unbelievable. And you know what? I really think like something like that says something for like customer service, and to a point where you're like, I understand that. I, I now after recently flying because I've always originally f- flown Southwest because they were usually cheaper. Yeah, I'm American. I like yeah, true, true, true. Because you're trying to find a deal because you you're the bag for free. Yeah, bag for like free, it's yeah. you know they have good perks for like a cheap flight. Yes, and that's and I mean, is it Texan? Southwest. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're from I think, Georgia. I don't know. I no. think they're headquartered out of like their main. Uh-huh. As, as Dallas, I believe. Oh yeah, you're right. But I don't they know. Originally, they were originally created. Uh, that's why it's South. It's either Texas or the Phoenix. state next to New Mexico. No, the other one, the other side. Arizona. Because it's Arizona, yeah. Alabama, and Alaska. I'm gonna tell you the whole thing, and then you tell me which one it is. Arizona, Arkansas. You know, like I think, is, a, I think it is Arizona, Florida, Florida Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, the Illinois, Illinois, Indiana. Yeah. Let's go Iowa, back Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine. Maine, Mass. Maine, Mass. 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 I know the whole thing. It's hey, uh, right. Go Pato. That's right. Jersey, New York. Go Pato. Everybody telling me to. You know, he was like a strong, <laughs> strong accent. So he just mentions. Uh, yeah, so he's just thinking everybody everybody in the country. And they're like, yeah, so here, here, here are the states we've been just... 
check this out. And then he starts, Arkansas, Arizona, Alabama, and Alaska, Connecticut, Colorado, and also California. Mm -hmm. And then he goes like until the How end. How funny. And in the last one, and Nevada, he, may, he, he skips I Nevada. <laughs> and back. Nevada. And then he mentions Puerto Rico and, and all the other territories. Oh, but, okay. yeah. He does mention the territories. He mentions everything. Yes. Oh, I, I, it took me a while for me to figure out he was talking about territories because I had no clue how many territories they had. But anyway, just a fun fact about yeah. Go Pato. Go Pato. And expensive flights. I think Southwest is pretty good yes. for your, your buck. Yes, but even even that, Spirit was cheaper by like 300 bucks. So I was like, $300? I mean, that's that's a lot of shopping. That's a lot of food for the kids. Yes. Like $300. That's more than a few bottles of water, too. But, but you know what? In hindsight, <laughs> fuck, man, pay that 300 bucks and get anyone. Get the but it all depends. The it all depends how, how often you fly. You get Wi Fi. Right? It all depends uh, how often you fly and True. your your condition. You know, like I don't have kids, so I don't have to. I can use this money. Hey, I can have a, a little bit of an upgrade. Well, and yeah, true, right? Yes. So it's important to put it in perspective. In perspective. Yes, in perspective, we're traveling a four to Disneyland and Universal Studios with hotels and a rental car and stuff. Yeah, you're so already spending like $45,000, so <laughs> it makes sense saving $300 uh, on yes. a flight. Yes. Uh, give, me, give them the English version of o que é um peito para quem tá cagado? Oh. Whoever farts is going to shit. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, what is a fart? If you're all shitting all over your, all of yourself, you know, yeah, like, so, already, yeah. yeah, so a fart is nothing, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, so the difference in tickets would be nothing <clears throat> compared to. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm just, I'm just saying kind of, right? kind, kind of, yes. Because the difference is. The diff, well, because we flew back Alaska on our way back mm -hmm. and it's like. Well, Alaska you, is nice too. You have more, oh, it's, a, it's really nice. Shit, my daughter's seat and spirit, the, the cushion was falling up. Like coming out, and I'm going. I don't think that's supposed that to happen. Plane. Yeah, no, <laughs> no I'm like, but it, not yet. It, it, yeah, <laughs> you're like it, ready it, to be sent to refurbish. Yeah. You gotta do what you gotta do, you know. Yeah, no, I and I realize that, but in hindsight, I'm gonna spend the extra money and go with a different airline yeah. just because. So, anyways, um, fuck you, spirit. <laughs> <laughs> shit, dude! It's like the Broncos. Yes, <laughs> they yes. should be called Broncos. The yeah. Broncos of airlines. They are the Broncos of airlines. The Broncos of airlines. Yes, right. The Broncos so of the sky. Spirit yeah. is the Broncos of airlines. Yes, a hundred percent agree with that statement. Okay. Jesus, so I end, you endorse me. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but to, to answer your point, Universal Studios has a better city walk. But okay. the park is a, is smaller and it feels more compact. Like you don't you like, I, there was a ton of people and you felt it. Like it was it was busy. It was busy. Disney, on the other hand, is a bigger park. Uh, people are more spread out. They have a lot of the the rides. Just I mean, like clockwork, going, going, going. So the most we ever waited for a ride, even with you know the same amount of people, was max like thirty five minutes. Where at Universal Studios was like an hour, sometimes an hour and 20 minutes for certain rides. And and like the quality of, of, of rides for for Disney are just a lot better. Just really, really, just a lot of fun. Logistics is something that is, is got to have to change because think, think about this. You go there to have fun and out of the 12 hours you spend, Ride like in there, how eight many rides. Eight, eight rides? What, yeah, eight, eight rides. So, how long does a ride last? Three minutes, two sure, minutes, yeah. one minute? Yeah, so wait for an hour. Uh, let's say in total, you don't spend an hour, half an hour. You still gotta walk between different ones, you gotta stop and eat yeah. at some point. Your total time of enjoyment out of 12 hours of stay there is about 35 minutes, 30 minutes, yeah, 40 minutes, yeah, yeah, but so. If I was to, if I was also to recommend, get That's like the steep. fast pass. It's going to be more expensive. It's going to be more expensive, it. but it's worth it. Did you, did you get it? No, I didn't. I didn't. So how we, how faster it is for our oh, puffers and drinkers, puffers and talkers for you to <laughs> enjoy the ride and then get back out to smoke a cigar and have a nice beverage and talk about it. I mean, 
10, 15 minutes waiting in line in the express lane as opposed to 45 minutes, 30, 45 minutes. Yeah, you, auto you could do the you could do the ride two or three times in the time that you're waiting one time to get. And it. you know what? I think you even, mm. I think you do it, it because I, I think the resistance, the resistance, um, you know, like it's very important. Resilience is very important for the sparks. Yeah. And I think if you spend one hour in in, in line, then he, the next time you think, oh my god, I have to spend another hour, so I'm gonna go first to the bar. You know, but if you only spend ten minutes, I think you just go. You know what? I'm, let me go it again, up and, up. and then oh, you yeah. go up and down, up and down. Yeah. I think it's more than just three times faster. I think it, you you enjoy much more. Right? Well, and so, and in all fairness, my thought process <clears throat> again, it wasn't a weekend. Maybe it was a weekend. I had been to Universal Studios in Disney before, and I remember not waiting very long, for, especially for Universal. I remember doing that Hagrid's ride. I get off, get back in line, and just go straight back on again. Like, and I did it about five times. I did that ride five times in the matter of 20 minutes. You know, it was just get off, get back on. So I'm like, I'm not going to spend that extra $200 per person. Yeah, it's expensive. I mean, I'm already paying $500 for Universal, which is our, is cheaper than Disney. I paid $500 for, for the four of us to go. Oh, is it per day or how Just one that? day. Just one, one day, day. $500. $500. Okay. If it's if you were to do the express pass or express lane, I believe it's an extra hundred, hundred and twenty dollars a person per ticket. You know, so that's basically double the price. Double the price for four people, right? For yeah. four people. So I'm like, and we got Disney. Okay, you know, did you go every Universal? Day? You, I just did one day, one day, one day, one day each. If you do, if you do like a, like a park pass where you can hop between different parks and stuff or multiple day pass, the the price does come down. It is cheaper. Um, but four, but yeah, for exactly four, I don't want to spend two or three days at universal or Disney. Just one day go max out balls to the wall and then you can rest the next day, you know, do yeah. two days of that, and then you can rest the rest of the trip. That's enough, right? It, two full days. Well, so on Monday, so Saturday, Universal, Sunday, Disney, and then Monday was drive down to San Diego. Mm-hmm. And so we did that drive, and I mean, everyone... To the shore. Did you, did you, how, 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 was it cold, or did you enjoy it was, the beach? It was, it was cold. I mean... Cooler. It cooler. was a refreshing cool. Okay. It's. I mean, it's San Diego weather, so it's always going to be like in the 60s, max 70 75 degrees one day for an hour and then it cools off again yeah. so winter is still winter yeah but i mean we went to the beach and yeah, and you know the kids played in the sand a little bit they didn't get into the water but i mean california jacket is just this sweatshirt and 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 a shirt or or shorts i mean and you're gonna be fine so but uh very fine. enjoyable man i'm i miss i miss southern california for visiting what, what tell us because how long did you spend there again so we we flew in friday and then we flew back thursday night okay so so we were there just under a week all right and um what's the difference <sighs> gas prices yeah <laughs> gas sure damn it dude you stole it right from my mouth oh <laughs> my god you're right you're yeah. this is a script yeah this is proof yeah. that this is rigged yeah <laughs> It's like the NFL. They've been talking about it. <laughs> no, I tell you what. <clears throat> so I met up with <laughs> with my one of my best friends who still lives in San Diego. And two of my best friends still live there. One, I, I basically they're convinced they just had a they just had a baby. They're going to move out to Austin now because they're like we can't afford to live in San Diego anymore. Yeah, they, it's the most expensive Price city. Mm-hmm. It's the most expensive city in the United States. Jesus Christ. And I mean, and he sent me a statistic. Zillow said if you you need to make two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars per year to be able to afford a median priced house in San Diego. And my and I mean, I remember before I left, I mean this was this was seven years ago when I was living there. Our our apartment we were staying at was three thousand dollars a month. How big was it? Do you remember? It was a three bedroom, two bath apartment, which was a thousand San, square feet. 
Yeah, yeah, right. a thousand square feet, mm-hmm. which is expen. So the reality, and I don't think like a lot of people understand, like when you live in San Diego, you, you're not living there by yourself. You're living with roommates. Every single one, like luckily my my friend, they bought a townhome. They live with their wife, or he lives with his wife and their and their baby. They're good, but they're like, we're not making it forward in life. We're not progressing in life. Like we're just working to pay the bills at this point. They'll have to pay the mortgage, then they will start living. Exactly, <laughs> but that's it. It's like they don't have anything after that. And and my one friend, he he lives there, but he's like, I, I've always lived with roommates. He's only lived with roommates. Did he buy it a long time ago? Um, bef- during when the market was really good, so probably three or four years ago. He bought no before that. Before that, actually, yeah. before it started going yeah. super up. So yeah, so it's kind of a a forced save, forced save, forced savings, you know. Well, and it's it's better to have your own thing that you can either rent out or sell and make some money off out of it. Like he did, he did the right thing. Mm-hmm. My other friend, he's just renting, putting money in another person's pocket with a roommate. You know, he doesn't live by his by himself because you can't afford it. You can't afford to live there. Um. So yeah, I mean gas. I mean I saw, I gassed up at four seventy nine a sure. gallon, but I saw prices at like six seventy nine. Jesus, a gallon of gas it's for unleaded. Yeah, regular unleaded. That wasn't diesel. That wasn't premium, crazy supreme or anything like that. But it has the Californication in there. What is the rental car? <laughs> Nice rental car. Uh, a Hyundai <laughs> right? Tucson, like come the, on, like the like the top model trim. It was really was nice, it nice. Actually, it was really. I've been nice. impressed by the Hyundai's lately, dude. I I was very impressed. Camila was like, I want to buy this car. Yeah, Honda, Honda, Hyundai, Hyundai, Hyundai Tucson. Oh. It was Korean. <sighs> Do yeah. you remember when he came to the US? Do you remember which year? Like oh, ballpark. I don't remember what year, but they've been around for, for a long, long time. time. I remember because they they would advertise their ten year hundred thousand warranty when you bought it, and wow. no other company would oh, offer those five. type of yeah. They, they, they wouldn't yeah. Nineteen eighty six. Nineteen eighty six. We got in Brazil way later because it was prohibited to have imported cars okay. in Brazil for a long time for other companies except Fiat, Ford, um, Volkswagen, Volkswagen, oh. and GM. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so mm-hmm. for a long time, only the four. And I remember the first cars, were they were trash. Like, just like a Russian cars, trash. <laughs> then Chinese later. So they all cars considered trash, but now they're catching up, right? Yeah. They are learning on the fly. Really nice. My wife's Kia, she has a Kia Sportage, which is just a small little SUV. Yeah. In Brazil. <laughs> Brazil is like... No, in Brazil, you know it's it's a hundred and twenty thousand hey I car. Hundred and fifty five. Yeah. Because you have how long have haven't you been to Brazil? Five years now. If you believe inflation here is strong, think about what happened to the purchase power for the past five years. Oh yeah. In Brazil. It's not no. political here, it's just that it got worse. Yeah. It just got you much know. worse. Yeah. Huh? You never get political. No. <laughs> we, we never <laughs> It, it never, it never happens. Never. <laughs> but, but now it's yeah. even worse. But, worse. But, but, and that's it. It's like, so, and, and like, and I, to me, it's a normal car. And then in, in Brazil, it's a status. Like if you have a Kia Sportage, oh, nice. a almost a $200,000 yeah, It's Kia. the same as only a, you know, Porsche. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the wow. perception. The, the perception, perception of it. Yeah, because it's like, oh, wow. Wow, you're, you're doing well in life. Rover. This yes. is what... Porsche means that. You know, you're like you are well doing in well in life. Not in one of my favorite movies. One of my favorite crazy people. Have you ever heard about the movie Crazy People? I think I can say that. My favorite part of the movie. It has to do with Porsche. This guy, this dude, gigantic, that doesn't speak for six years. And then they go to this sanatory and then they ask this sanatory people there to create the commercials because people are fed up with regular commercials and then this guy comes after six years but without speaking they are about to lose all the contracts and this guy comes and picks up the camera and says porsche too small 
to fuck inside, <laughs> but guarantees your fuck later. <laughs> <laughs> it's something like this. I I, I never watched this the movie in English, but <laughs> and then wow, they got all the contracts. I think it was worth it. Our yeah. time here. <laughs> so a Porsche is like this. It guarantees you get laid later. Right. So in the seventies and eighties. Right, yeah. it was a symbol. A it sex was symbol. a symbol, and they, you know, they stay. They, they are, they are, they are up there. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. the way you say this word, this is flexing. You guys don't talk about me flexing. You, how right. do you say Porsche? No, you say Porsche. Porsche. How, you, how, how you see Porsche? Porsche. 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 Yeah. Oh come on. <laughs> you can use Porsche. Right? Yeah, exactly. Porsche. But in, in in Germany, it's Porsche. Porsche. Yeah. yeah. Actually, the Americans are doing the right thing, but still flexing. <laughs> we do some things, right? Yeah, I know about that, right? So one victory over here. I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah I know about that, right? <laughs> anyway, so tell me more about um, about California. What is different besides the gasoline, as you mentioned? Uh, and I think it, I think overall, just my perspective of of being there. Chill, um, lay back. So- no, opposite. So I think the thing is like when I was living when I was living there, it, it was when I was in the military and then obviously I met Camila, we lived there um, you know, for a year before we moved out here because Lucas was still a little baby. Coming back into like Camila wanted to go back to our favorite spots, Pacific Beach. It's a little little town outside of out of San Diego. But it's a party town. It's a bars everywhere and and stuff and it was our favorite place to go because it was always like hey let's go to pb and you know go have go have you know we'll go have some coxinhas because there's a little brazilian restaurants there so we'll so eat some brazilian food and then we'll go out to the bars and go drink so camila's perspective of like let's go have that fun like we used to was there and that kind of dream of like ah, pb you know we had so much fun and then when we got there it was like with the two kids were walking, stepping over homeless people. Mm. We got like contact high because everyone was smoking weed. You know, it's just young people partying. Did they ask about the smell? No, no, no they, didn't. they didn't. No, they, they didn't, didn't ask. Okay. So I was like, oh, okay. Good, good, good. Yeah. Don't ask, don't tell. Yeah, basically. So I was like, and I, and I just looked at, and dirty, you can tell like homeless people were peeing like in the corners and stuff like that. And, and, and I'm just going like, not what you I, remember. It's not what I remembered because when I was younger, it didn't bother me, you know, because I didn't have my kids with me. You know, you're blinded with like, oh, we're just going to go party and drink and have fun. And now from a different eye perspective, you go in there and you're like, Man, this place is not what I remember and not what I want to be around anymore. You know, so that it was kind of deflating. And honestly, like I told, I told everyone like, it was a good vacation, but I don't think I would go back to California. Like, I, you know, I kind of went back and I did all of the things that I want to do in San Diego. I went to all my places to get, you know, tacos and burritos and, and you know, all of my spots. Is the food a lot better, you think? Food in California, I have to say. One knock against Texas, you know, God don't strike me down for this, is that I, I really think food in California is better than Texas. Even the barbecue? Dude, look up Phil's Barbecue, please, in San Diego. It probably it's owned by Texans. Okay, <laughs> I accept that. I, I take that. <laughs> I will say that out of I mean, we're in a lucky city of Texas where we have some pretty good food here, but so Phil's Barbecue. I knew they would have good food. Phil's Barbecue is one is like the number two most reviewed barbecue spot in the united states oh google does <laughs> uh, of course he means that 100 texan barbecue places are not even in the ranking they are all concur but then <laughs> only about the ones that are included into there okay it's so a, but you don't have to get there at six in the morning and wait in a line right there is normally the, normally there is a huge line is that but, the same as here? but it's not the same it's as not franklin's. the same as franklin's or it's no, not no. so we got there in the afternoon, like four o'clock, and we walked right in, got our food, and got right out. That's nice. So that's the nice thing about it is you can get quality. I mean, it is quality barbecue, delicious tasting barbecue, and and 
some sometimes of the day, in the normal part of the day, when you think there's going to be a rush, there's going to be a rush. When it's like not a rush, you're going to go there. And it's it's just a good, good barbecue place. We, Camila and I were missing that, honestly. We expected this type of barbecue when we came out here to Texas because Austin in Texas is supposed to be, you know, barbecue capital of the world. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Terry Black's is good. Franklin's is good. But if you don't go to sometimes the Salt Lake, I've had Salt Lake where it's been great barbecue and then other times where it's been trash barbecue. But you know what? Here in Texas, I think I have to go to these small business ones. I, yes. I mean, I've tried it. To me, I don't want to exaggerate, but let's say 100 in five years. I mean, it's just the two of us. Yeah. Right? We've been to 100 different places. And I, I can tell you the boutique, tiny ones yeah. are always the best. Yeah. Yeah. No, 100%. It's not a brand. I highly recommend this place whenever you get a chance to go check it out. Interstellar Barbecue. Where is this um, at? Off 620, like before Anderson Mill. Oh, yeah. I've heard of this place. It's in a little shopping Can center. you put in the picture? Can, can I see the picture? Yeah, again? the mouse so, is kind of missing. Oh. Boom. Um, so it's kind of like off the beaten path. So you'd miss it. Like you, There's not a big sign. You see that? Um, this. Yeah. But... It is like you you got to get there before they open and wait in line, but they have like a couple beer troughs and you just get free beer while you're waiting in line. They have the ice cold beer if you want it, of course, or you can drink water. I think they have waters as well, but they have these peach tea glazed pork belly. Oh my. Okay. See, and see, that's what I feel like. So San Diego has quad, like just feels barbecue in my opinion for barbecue spots, but like this place right here, Interstellar Barbecue, would definitely be a place that's like, okay, I need to go check this out. You, know this you gotta do Franklin's, you gotta do Terry Black's. Oh, you have a lot good. more barbecue places around oh, here that like, okay, I gotta go. I gotta go and try. So, yeah, so I found out about this place in a magazine. They were on like the Texas barbecue, whatever. They're like on the front page, they won like an award or something. But yeah, they're it's open easy from to 11 remember, to 4 right? or until they sell out. That's which my they favorite sell out place. Every single day. Make I've heard of that. In, yes. Uh, kind of close to downtown, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, Mikkel, Mikkel's, Mikkelthwaite, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I really enjoyed this one. But uh, you're right. I mean, most of them, I honestly, um, many times I get frustrated. Like, oh, is that is that it? Is that it? Pretty, I think with meat, because with pork, I think it's pretty good. I think they it's easier to find easy pork here than meat. It's a lot of St. Louis style pork ribs. It's yeah, there, it which is, is my yeah. favorite of a dry rub. But yeah, I don't know. I think everyone's claim to fame is brisket. But when you hear so many awesome things about Franklin's and you wait four hours for it, and you're like, oh, that's good. But it's like. Is it worth it four hours? Probably. But I have not. a trick. I've, I've had Franklin's. I have a really trick. I think it's good. It is. It's I have a trick good. for, for just, Franklin. You're not going to do it every weekend. Yeah. But I'm not going to review it here if anyone asks. But I have a trick. And I'm going to try to we'll take you out. all guys all there with this trick. And we won't have a line in there. Okay. Yeah. So I'll you try flexing? To do that. No, no, Dude, I'm not flexing. Goddamn it's not flexing, flexing, man. It's just uh, knowledge. I know the owner. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I don't. You know, the owner normally lets me into the back door. Yeah. He, also, he only flies Delta. Yeah. Oh, my God. No. That's how we met him in the sky room. Yeah. 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 And he, got, he gave me the platinum bag. Yeah. 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 That's the guy who gave me the platinum bag. Yeah, exactly. Platinum barbecue. <laughs> platinum rib. Jesus. Gets me, like, free entrance with the, with the platinum bar bag, yeah. you know? No, it's, yeah, there is a, That's worth the price. a trick. Yeah. Yeah. So... But you use the word deflated. That that word called my attention. You use the word deflated. Did you project before going? Yes. Like, oh. 100%. 100%. So don't you think like a little bit of your expectation also make it things more contrast when you get there? And So I was living vicariously through my kids when we were in Universal Studios in Disney. I was having, I was a little kid with them. Let's go, let's go on this ride. Let's go see Mickey Mouse. I was having a blast. I was having so much fun. And then that buildup of energy and excitement carried on into San Diego. I'm going to see my, my best friends and we're going to go yes. to all of these spots and see everything and do all of this stuff. And then when you get there, you're like, fuck, man. Like, it is just one example. The, the hotel we stayed at wasn't a bad hotel. Still expensive. 
but it was something built out of like the 80s the carpet talk about carpet they they haven't changed that in like 40 years wow the the heating system i mean was like a built-in unit that came out the top the i mean just just the way i'm going like i can't believe i spent this much money for for a play they had uh they had laundry service there oh we only accept quarters and that's such a god and that's such a san diego thing where they have what's a quarter dad <laughs> oh yeah we, we, we what's we, a quarter there no and, I, and I, when i walked up to the front desk i go like okay well here's you know five and they're like no no, no we don't have quarters that was my reality living in San Diego when I lived in these apartments. You would spend three, four thousand dollars in rent. Oh, we've got laundry service on site, but you need quarters. And don't come talk to us. You got to go to the bank. You got to go somewhere to get these quarters to do your laundry. It's such a. It was such an. It's one of those things like. They don't have in, like a machine on site to put bills in and get quarters back. We live in 2024, Stupid. and they're still living in like the 80s. I'm not. I'm not kidding you. And I go, guys. We need to. You need to. The shittiest hotel here in Austin. You can still swipe your goddamn card and do laundry here. Yeah. The. It, it's such a simple thing for them to implement that yeah. it's still living in the past. There. Yeah. Um, getting a segue from that. Um, notice that this. Ex look how bad this experiences some places are for. They offer you an expensive product and they give you such a terrible, horrible ex uh, experience, right? Yeah. Uh, it's so expensive, right? Um, it happened to me at, at Apple when I went there for the Vision Pro for, to, to test, not to buy, to test the Vision Pro, right? So he said. <laughs> right? <laughs> and the whole, like, he it. told it in here that he was going to buy two and keep one in box. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, as purposes. an investment. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> I wasn't the one who said that. I think there's somebody so else in this group here. Yeah. What well, are you looking but, at, man? Why are you my, looking at? Yeah, he's looking at the, the stock market. Yeah, exactly. Pulling, yeah, I'm pulling up yeah. video footage. But it was such a. Uh, I think they are, Apple is getting is getting complacent, complacent, mm -hmm. and I think this is what happens in this place. Is now oh, this place is so good, um, you know, everybody wants it, and then, you know, they charge you. Uh, whatever they wanted and they offer you nothing so what kind of service dylan what kind of service you expect for a four thousand product i guess a four product vision product. pro four thousand dollar pro yeah four thousand dollar i'm sorry four thousand dollar uh, i don't know we've talked about it I, I don't know i think that's what like what do you expect the service to be you'd expect it to be excellent just as a cut and dry adjective, you'd expect excellent service, excellent, whatever right? that is for that product. Anything yeah. else? Like you sit down and as you're, you know, testing it and have somebody doing a massage on you. Yeah, I thought more things I can't say here, but yes, that's exactly exactly <laughs> what you, you expect. <laughs> yeah, right. We need to beep it, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, um, this is what I expected to get there. Honestly, I expected that. Oh, George, you are coming because you book it first, right? So. And then, oh, George, yes, we are waiting. Like, you're just waiting for you, George. I expected... Oh, and they're like a tech company, too, so that it wouldn't be hard for them to do something. That's like my that. point, right? So when I got there, hey, George is, George is going to experience Vision Pro at 1130. Yeah. I would feel special. I, I, I want to buy it. I, I, I feel that. I feel that. No. A mess. Oh, you just go there, just talk to that guy, like, treating you like... Yeah. What? I, yeah. I get there and say, no, no, what, why are you here? You already have your schedule in there. It's like, shut you know, it's chill, man, chill. I said chill three times. Man, for me to say, hey, hey, buddy, chill. You saw the guy working there? Yes, three guys. Why? Because they, they were like blowing you off kind of? Or what was no, because 11.30. And then you stand at the door, the door opening and closing, and everybody coming in and out, and you are That's standing packed. there. Is that the domain? Waiting. At the domain, at the domain, uh, domain, um, yeah, uh, store. So you're there, and then then this door is open and closing and open. People, so you, I'm waiting 15 minutes act, uh, after my schedule. Nah, I'm not complaining. It's 15 minutes. It's just that that's the experience. I, I, I'm seriously, if it's good. that good, I will buy it. Right. 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 
But if it's that good, is that if it's that good? Yeah, if the experience. So it's almost like they didn't even care if you buy it or not. That's what I felt. Like, we and don't then, need your money. But man, this is just the beginning of the experience. Okay, so I just wait in there. Then I go. Then I say, okay. Oh, someone needs to come here and pick you up. I say, okay. There's a special room for that. That's that's nice. It's gonna be white, isolated. No, it's just right there. I was just like. I just had like four steps. No, and I get in. No, pick you up and then pick me up. They, the man, they, they yeah. just they let you pick you up. And yeah, like, exactly. Here you go. And then <laughs> they came with the forklift or something. Yeah, yeah. and you have three feet that direction. <laughs> yeah, they were not well trained. I mean, they don't know much about it. Ron, the guy, Ron, the guy who gave me the, you know, who was instructing me throughout, through, sure. he was cool, nice, a nice guy from Chicago. So I had a, you know, a conversation with him because I lived there. But you could see that he was giving me instructions and sometimes you, you know, misstep a little bit. And then, because you see, if you, if you have to enlarge and reduce the size, it's supposed to be this way. And he told me to go that way. But just a little just, thing. Yeah, you could tell like, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, like me. Honestly, I feel that if I spend any of, any of us, not, not me, any of us, a day only using it. You would be you do better at the service than I had been the one I had. Oh wow! So then, and that's what I feel like is wrong with getting into customer service or society in general is that everything is so spoon fed into you. Like, don't think, just keep doing recycling what we have to tell you. That everyone gets impatient, everyone just gets pissed off. They there's everyone's disorganized. Like you said, you would think that an Apple store. Would be the ultimate experience. Yes, that's what I expected. We, I mean, I, yeah, because they're a tech company. We had people coming out giving some estimates for Hilton's garage, and they'll send you a text, and it'll be like, "Michael's on the way," and send you a picture of him, and then you get to like watch him drive all the way. It's all this stuff implemented on like a like some epoxy garage company. It's not Apple, some like billion dollar tech company. That's so exactly. It's not what hard I for them to implement something like that. They just don't. Care. And then after that, they just I had want to... their money. They just like, no, yes. do you want the do you want the product or not? Because I feel like they think Joe Schmo is going to buy it. The product sells itself, so yeah, either buy it or don't. I don't care about your experience. That's what. That's why I get I get the segue are. with the San Diego service, so we can move to that, right? So the, because the feeling is the same, you know, you go to those places. That's not right. It's a the, you're, they're doing you a favor. That's what I felt. Yeah, you want the experience, so We're you know, do whatever. It. Well, this is what we can do. And okay, I will talk about the experience of the product later, but just to conclude this part of the experience there. So I had to solve a situation with my, you know, my storage that is not moving, you know, things are not moving from the, sto from the phone to the, the cloud. Phone storage to the cloud. So, and then I, I was talking to this, I noticed that super cool woman, I could tell that she wasn't happy about that. So I engaged and it's like, so, what, what what what's your take on this product? And I'll say, yeah, you said you said right. It's just a product. They don't care about people. I'm like, wow, she's being like upfront on this. And then she said, yeah, um, it's being packed every single day, all the time, you know. And you can see how frustrated people are. The people, are, she noticed that people are frustrated. And then I, I they, they, she said, I noticed you guys were waiting for 15 something minutes. I was here doing nothing, and I'm trained. I'm not we'll top top tier because they have like she said 175 employees and 35 are trained she was like top five because she would do different types of uh, um, demo demo right? yeah. uh, uh, and then she said I could have not been I, I could have been there you know like I can tell it can you please tell us what is wrong what is wrong could you write it what, 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 what went wrong because definitely you can see they didn't hire anybody for that no one is special when they when they're to explain the product just oh just got in there so it wasn't what i expected that's what i'm this it's yeah. not what i expected in terms of services you know you know what i said if i am apple and this is just me think about dylan you go there and the experience is wizardly the word this is the word it's, it's out of the man it's nothing you've seen before and I'm glad I'm alive at this time to see something going on, going on like this, right? So it's not about the experience, but I expected my face. Do you see my face? Like, oh, I yeah. man, I was like, damn, 
you can see people ah oh, you see the expressions look like a japanese story you know like japanese oh mm, they do they, they express it felt like that the whole time and no pictures of me no pictures of, no pictures of anybody come on i want a camera just put a camera here just show my expressions by the end by, by, by the time i'm leaving hey just could you tell us what you think of the product look what i had for you the here are your experience. What would you do if you see your experience, people's experience about the product? Because the product already sells itself. I know. You don't Lazy. Need, they complacence. Don't. Complacency. Yeah, exactly. Complacency. Yeah. How would you feel if you if you if we you and your kids, because we can book like for four people together, and then there are video there's a video showing how excited your kids are, how man. So you could relive that excitement. Like, ah, should I buy it? Should I not? You look like, at look how much fun you're having. Exactly, yeah. you relive that excitement. You relive that enjoyment. <clears throat> What's the name of the um, Zuckerberg as one two? Yeah, like the headset. Oculus. Is it the oh. Oculus? And he was. I watched a video of him. He was like shocked at how limited the Apple Vision Pro, just based on the price difference. He's like, yes. ours is like three hundred, four hundred. So. Yeah, I thought theirs, you know, like fourth that whatever it is, it would be amazing. And I go and use it. And I'm like, there are some things that are Oculus. I feel like does better. Yeah. So it's like it's just the clout of having the Apple Vision Pro. It's like it's I the- like his timing. I like this um, guerrilla marketing. This is what it what it yeah, is. Yeah, they're going after each other. Yeah, guerrilla is just like you wait for say something, and then you find an angle and you explore that angle as much as you t- you take everything from that because it's cheap it's effective it's the drones of marketing you know is <laughs> the, the the drones of marketing but the experience buddies um i'd like to see like a head-to-head against the two because that basically 10 percent of the cost like that'd be more useful potentially yeah yeah how'd you feel did it feel uncomfortable in your head it's kind of heavy or? so experience wise you know it's right the, 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 the don'ts the don'ts right the don'ts it's expensive as shit i wouldn't buy it maybe your idea of buying it and keep it for 20 years that would make sense for to purchase as an investment but i would only buy the second third maybe version of that because that would be lots of updates on that and probably the same price right right so maybe with two or three innovations it's worth it the, the money right um it's heavy it is heavy. it's heavy um i didn't have much instructions on how to do it or hey we'll give you two minutes to figure it out and this is a true experience that you'll be like oh this side think about you and your friends no 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 you don't touch it just just follow what i'm telling you so it kind of a uh, ruins a bit the experience i don't know about you but i want to if it's safe i want to try right if it's safe i want to try it and then oh no, no just do that do that it's just too robotic i think in 30 minutes, you can do so much, so many other things, you know. And then, okay, so you adjust. Uh, you, you can tell that they will try to explore more um, real estate in the thing, you know, because there is one button here that works as, a, you know, it connects the computer, it okay. opens it. And then here you have an adjustment, so a band, you know. So it's, pre- it's pretty good. I mean, once you... Because I see it was a little wobbly, and then he said, "Oh, just go there and attach it." You know, like we could say, "Yeah, tie it, tie it, tied it," and it was pretty good. And then it was pretty good, tight, but heavy. Um, I don't take an experience of a twenty-minute experience as, you know, uh, uh, something I can talk about. But you can tell, it's heavy here. You know, it's it's heavy here. Uh, later, and then the second step that I notice also. It's so, Im- the immersion is so real that it's invasive. I am, mm. it's very, man, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Of course, the videos, they have it, right? They, they just like the, when you, you remember the first, uh, when the, fir- I, the first IMAX came, oh, yeah. they have only one movie. It was a, a fantastic. And the other one's like, a, yeah, just a, a big yeah. screen or something. So, the products they showed are out of this world. It's magic. It's you can you, you you cry if you have kids watching the video. 
there is no way you're not gonna cry. It's, it's, there is no way. It's so, um, man, you can touch people. You, you, you feel like moving, moving your hands because you can do everything from here. You know, you don't have to do it. Just the one that pushing a little bit up and down, but everything is here. Your body's here. You, you just like, you're here, right? So, you, yeah, and then everything moves here with your eyes. You do like this, it moves, man. It's you look at I look at the E in ca cafe in there, and then I go there and I pick up the E. Oh, that's strange. In a one hundred and twenty square squares screen. Right here, right here, and it's you, you zoom zooms in like one hundred and twenty times. I don't know. I no. I'm just saying that that I can put. Yeah, technically, but I'm just saying that you can zoom in things with perfect image like crystal clear, clear whatever you go what, whatever you do it's just a 8k tv of the whole time and it's wow. funny because it's supposed to be right here but it feels like a seven feet eight feet long from you so so this invade is invasiveness right i can see people isolating themselves it because guys it's so calm there is one that is 360 and you are in switzerland all the noises and then you can you can there is there are no there are no phones but you listen through the phone and through your bones yeah Just, it leaks out a little bit a little bit it leaks out but you can oh, what the heck how, how am i listening to this it it's not like here you know like you, you feel it Ray, Ray Ban and, and other companies would have glasses that would sit on your uh, or not Maxilla. orbital bone, but some some type of forget the bone right here, but it yeah. does vibrations. And yes, and you hear you you would hear music playing, but you wouldn't hear anything like out. You'd just be wearing something, and you're like, oh, right on your jam to music, and people are yeah. like, what what's happening? You're going crazy, and it's just putting music into your bones. So I'm That's gonna great. I'm gonna it's let you guys make difference. Like you guys ask some questions because I think it makes it's it, it makes more inclusive, right? So not me speaking about the experience. And then I can tell what do you think. Do you think it's it's better? It's a better approach for that. Yeah. Well, so what would you see as like a benefit for your day to day life? Think about okay. First of all, first of all, think about a OLED LG 8K master model. How much would that cost? An 120 screen, 120 inch screen of the best of the best TV seven eight thousand dollars yeah you have that you save money jesus christ you have that yeah you, you don't have one you have 360 on that that's kind of crazy okay so uh, man i speculated so many i couldn't sleep you know because i i was just a, you know i was just projecting so many possibilities right so it's crazy in this case okay it's you can tell like um yeah so that's one one of them okay but like super high definition of like realism 8k where you're I, like, now i understand you feel... i understand what 8k is yeah because i didn't for me 4k and 8k was the same like you feel like you're there you're actually there okay feeling about this this part it's emotional like there is a, a rhino a baby rhino i swear i could smell the baby, the, the baby rhino it, it's so close and it gives you like there are some uh, two adults like kind of a protecting a kid, you know, or the kid is touching. I was the kid. I could, I could see it. I could feel the animal there. Oh man, that's so trippy. I could feel feel it. That's so trippy. Okay, so um, <laughs> there is this kid's party, and think about a picture. Think about you have a picture of a family. Oh, and how emotional you get it. It's your daughter speaking, you know, with the camera. Is your because it's you, right? It's you, and your daughter is speaking. Your it's a mother like putting a kid just in front of you, in, like in your lap. And let's say your your daughter is twenty five years old, and then you remember the scene. Yeah, it's shocking. It's uh, one of the most impressive one, and I think <clears throat> excuse me, some people will suffer with that. Was this woman in a slack? between two uh, two pieces it's a mount 
there are two, you know, in the Slack board. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, like, huh? Is that Slack the name, isn't it? Like walking on a rope, you mean? Yeah, it's like a rope, and then the, the name of the game, of the sport is Slack, is lacking, right? Yeah. Oh, where you're, yeah, tight you're, rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So imagine like that. You are on one side, the woman is on the other side, and you see her struggle. You see her dirty foot, dirty feet, and you can see that her feet, like, man, amalgamated with the, with the Slack, and her concentration, you could see her concentration, you root for her. You're like, yes, you come. Yes, you can do. Yes, you can do. You can, you can see like, you can, you feel like extending your hands and bringing up this person because she did it. You look down, my friend. You don't see the end of it. Jesus you don't Christ. see the end of it. And then you try to look, it goes all the way here. Now they say, okay, let's say you're gonna work. Switzerland. So it's the whole thing, Switzerland. Okay? You are you are in the pa in the pastures, you know, like you are there through a window if you wanted, whatever you wanted. And then you just are wor you're working over here and then you see that I'm just gonna relax. You move there, it changed it whatever you wanted, and then you start listening to the birds. There's rain coming and you could just sleep with that there. That is breathtaking, like draw dropping, uh, draw, jaw dropping. dropping. Yeah, yeah. This is like unbelievable, unbelievable experience. So uh, the working thing, it, it takes some time for you to adjust, but it's, I think it's organic, you know, like intuitive, intuitive. Yeah, this is the word I think I put it there. You're right. So it's, you know, like the way you touch things. But the, the most incredible thing is like, hey, look at the E. And then you look at the E and you see the E like blinking very lightly, very lightly at the end, you know, just like, hey, you, okay, now click it. And then you click it and open the photos. When you open the photo of the album, when you open the albums, man, and then you go over the photos and, and then you, it's just, you know, and you, you go like this, like that, and then it, it moves, you know, like how Apple works mm -hmm. with the pictures. So it moves to one side. Okay, so hold it. Okay, hold it now and do it like I think twice on this side and then you put the screen on the side here. Okay, okay, make it large. You can enlarge, there's an enlarging drawing on the side. So you just go there. I think you do something like this and then you pull it down and you have the screen here. And then you, you put the screens any way you want it in front of you, on the side, down. It's... And then it's Excel working here, your games betting there, a camera with your family because you stayed home. Interesting. Well, and that bombshell. Thank you very much for Thank watching. Thank you. <laughs> was a like, lie. comment, Subscribe. Yeah, we are not in a conversation now in the podcast, so we're yes. recording it. So yes. for a moment we forgot about yeah, it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, really? and uh, send us a comment if you have experienced um, Southwest Southwest, uh, San Diego, and the Apple Vision, Vision Pro. Pro. And fuck you, Spirit Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> and Apple, you can do better. You can offer better ex service experiences, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you. <laughs>